Grasslands National Park. We're on the west block. We came south on Highway 4 all the way from Rosetown and it's actually a really beautiful highway so it only took us about two hours to get here but it is after five o'clock so the visitor center is already closed but we have a campsite booked so we are gonna head there now. To the two trees trail day use area there is a four kilometer loop trail that starts from this point and I don't know if you can see behind me but we are also in the equipped camping campground so there's um, just like five or six little teepees and we are staying in one of them there's only one other lady here tonight um, it's very quiet here there is no cell service and there are a couple of barbecues actually provided here and we are just cooking up some supper. in the teepee. Not exactly a very restful night, but a cool experience, I guess you could say. Oh, and I need to show this. This is another thing that I kept thinking about every time I kind of was about to maybe fall asleep was rattlesnake, because grassland is rattlesnake country, and look at how much room there actually is between the ground and the teepee. That's a lot of space. Here's a little look around. I'm glad it didn't rain. There wasn't too much that we wanted to do in that area of Grasslands National Park. So we got up early and hit the road heading down towards Montana. We crossed the border at Monarchy and drove about 500 kilometers down to Livingston, Montana. And that's where we stayed for the night. We got to Livingston in the late afternoon and we did a bit of touring around to check out all their cool buildings but our campground was about 10 miles out of town, so after getting some groceries, we hit the road to head out and check out where we would be staying for the night. So we just made it to our KOA campground. We rented this cabin here, I will show it to you. This might look familiar. We stayed in a few similar places to this last summer on our bike trip. And it's so easy because it has the bed. All we had to do was come in, dump our sleeping bags off. And if you're traveling with more than two, there's also bunk beds. So Travis just got the fire going. And I am over here making up some kebabs. So we have um, some chorizo sausage and tomatoes. And then on another skewer, we are going to do a, just some white onion and yellow pepper. And we're going to have them together on a baguette bread with chimichurri steak sauce. So this is the first campfire kebab supper for us.
hiking along the Mammoth Hot Springs terraces. Um, there's, it's all boardwalk, there's boardwalk paths, paths kind of crisscrossing all along. We are on the boardwalk, we're just at Mount Terrace. And if you look in the background, you can see all the steam coming off the waterfalls, which is really unique. Just after Travis did a quick repair on some clutch problems that he was having, we got back on the road and were driving through Lamar Valley when the engine light came on on my bike and it has done this in the past and we haven't really been able to solve the problem yet so Travis actually had to drive back to that gas station and get oil for my bike while I waited at the side of the road. Once both of our bikes were back into good enough condition, we continued through Lamar Valley on to Cook City. We had lunch in Cook City and then set off along the Beartooth Highway. The Beartooth Highway is a 68 mile travel corridor between Cook City, Montana and Red Lodge, Montana. In between those two towns, the road rises up to 10,947 feet at what is called Beartooth Pass in Wyoming. This highway has been named one of the most beautiful scenic drives in all of America. While it certainly was a beautiful drive, we didn't get to stop and enjoy it much as Travis was still having trouble with his bike, so we just quickly continued on to Cody, Montana, which is where we set up camp for the night. With the help of a few YouTube videos, Travis was able to fix the problem with his clutch last night and we were able to hit the road early in the morning and head back into the park through the East Yellowstone entrance. This little bit of highway between Cody and the East Yellowstone is also named one of America's most beautiful drives and it definitely lived up to that name. It was such a nice morning driving into the park with this beautiful scenery. What's happening, Becky? Lunchtime. We're at the fishing bridge visitor center in the picnic area. Just mixed up some taco salad. And we're gonna have lunch and hopefully not see any bears. Now we're at the mud volcano. We kind of came north towards the canyon campground. And we stopped here at Mud Volcano. Um, there's lots of there's lots of buffalo along the road and you can see one guy just down the hill here.
survived our first night in Yellowstone National Park, bear country. We only had a little moment of two hours of waking this. <laughs> being awake, being so sure that I could hear something when really there was nothing. Um, so we just drove to Tom's Point, Uncle Tom's Point, I think, on the south rim of the Yellowstone and Grand Canyon. And we were told that if you're here between 9 and 9.15 in the summer days, that you will see the rainbow. So it's not a very clear day, but we will see. After we had seen both the upper and lower falls, we decided to hike the Clear Lake Trail from Uncle Tom's Point. The trail is just over two miles, but in those two miles you go through large rolling meadows, forested areas, you see Clear Lake and Lily Pad Lake, and also just areas of hydrothermal activity. So we just hiked just over two kilometers down the path, the Clear Lake Trailhead path. We parked at the Uncle Tom's Viewpoint parking lot and just walked across the road and we walked past Clear Lake already and this one is called Lily Pad Lake, which you can see why it is called that. It's beautiful. Just finished our hike from Uncle Tom's to the lookout here and it took us exactly an hour so it worked out really well. We spent the next couple of hours on the North Rim Drive stopping at all three of the big pullouts Lookout Point, Grand View and Inspiration Point. The views from this side of the canyon were absolutely stunning and even though you couldn't see the waterfalls that well just looking down into the canyon and at the river itself was well worth the drive along the North Rim. On the way back to West Yellowstone that afternoon, we took a wrong turn and ended up near the Norris Geyser Basin, so we decided to stop and have a quick look around before heading to our campsite for the night. Ernie's Bakery and Deli in West Yellowstone became highly recommended, so we were there by 7 a.m. when it opened. We had breakfast and then got a lunch to go to have later while we were in the park. We arrived to the Old Faithful area just before 9 a.m. and had just a bit of time to wait around before going to see Old Faithful. Faithful is definitely a bucket list item for Travis and I have to admit that watching it with what felt like thousands of people super excited to see it erupt was pretty cool. There's so much to do in the Upper Geyser Basin other than just see Old Faithful. There's actually a loop around the whole area that is half paved and half boardwalk. It's three miles in total, and you can also add in a small hike up to Observation Point, which has really cool views of the Geyser Basin. After biking and walking around in the Upper Geyser Basin, we watched Old Faithful erupt one more time from the balcony of the Old Faithful Lodge. Grand Prismatic Springs, which is actually supposed to be one of the top sites in the park. It's the one that I have actually been most excited for. So we're just about to walk up and do the boardwalk loop around. It should only take about 20 or 30 minutes. After walking along the boardwalk at Grand Prismatic, we wanted to get a better view of the hot spring. 
we drove just up the road to the next pullout and biked up the Fairy Falls Trail and then hiked to the Grand Prismatic Overlook. We were rewarded with the most beautiful view of Grand Prismatic. On our drive back through Geyser Country, we stopped at a few of the pullouts and as we were looking at the Great Fountain Geyser, this other geyser not too far away actually started to erupt. Even though it added on quite a bit of time to our travel that day, we weren't quite ready to say goodbye to Yellowstone, so we decided to drive back out through the park. We drove from Norris to Mammoth, stopping at the Artist Paint Pots to take in one more area of hydrothermal activity. Artist Paint Pots is a small but lovely thermal area with a one mile loop trail that goes to colorful hot springs and two large mud pots. After a night in Great Falls, we hit the road the next morning, ready to head back into Canada. Even though it was a little bit out of our way, we were heading to Waterton Lakes National Park to camp for a night because it is just one of our very favorite places. Driving back into Waterton every time, I can't really get over or explain the feeling of excitement at being back in this gorgeous spot. We got on our pedal bikes and just took a laid back tour around the town site at Waterton stopping in at some of our favorite shops and restaurants, just enjoying what would be the last full day of our vacation. So we made it, we're back in Saskatchewan. We just stopped at a roadside pullout, um, kind of along the highway by Cypress Interprovincial Park. We're just resting for a bit. It is super hot, like 29 degrees maybe. We've gone 350 kilometers probably today from Waterton to here. We are going to try and make it home tonight. We're still probably an hour and a bit to Swift Current and then an hour and a half from there. So it'll be, we'll be getting home a little bit later in the evening, but it'll be good to be home.